So as you can probably tell from the title of today's video, today we're going to be in for something a little bit different. Now, basically, to put it bluntly, some Chinese companies ended up sending me some fake sneakers of what I can assume to be a Russian website. And just given this opportunity, I wanted to make a video where I can discuss with you guys, you know, the state that replica sneakers are in at the moment. And so in today's video, I'm going to unbox these replica sneakers here for you guys and then compare them to a genuine pair of the same shoe just so you can guys can see how good these replicas are actually getting. And further on in the video, I'm gonna have a little bit more discussion regarding is it right or wrong to buy and sell replica sneakers. So let's get right into that. So what's good my guys and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here, my name is Josh and I'm an Aussie who makes content on all the latest regarding streetwear and sneakers. So if that's something you're into, don't forget to go and smash that subscribe button below just so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. But now that's out of the way, let's jump straight into today's video. So for starters, I just wanted to kick off with a little bit of a disclaimer. Basically because I am still a small channel on YouTube, I've never actually done any type of brand deal or promotion. So everything I've said positive or negative in the past and in today's video has always just been my open and honest opinion and that's the way I intend to keep all of my content going on into the future. Um, and in saying that, it's not every day that I receive an email with the subject heading being promoter. And so that's what really caught my attention and how this whole thing kind of started. So as you guys can see, I have the box here that they originally shipped in. Um, but before I tear into that, I'm just going to run you guys through the back and forth of emails that ended up in these coming here. Um, as the whole pretense of these being here really kind of confuses me still. Let me just grab my computer. So on April 1st at 7.38 PM, I get an email titled promoter um, and it's got a subject as business inquiries. Um, this is all in caps, so it seemed kind of important, and so that's why it caught my attention originally. And so this is what the email reads. Hi, my name is Grace Tong. I'm a marketing promoter of perfectkicks.ru. Now, I'm pretty sure .ru is Russian. Let me just go check that. <laughs> yep, it's a Russian. Okay, on with the email. We are a China-located team which sell high-end fashion stuffs, including shoes, clothing bags, and accessories, etc. I'm writing to express our sincerity to invite you to collaborate with us. And then there's an Instagram handle, um, which I did check out and that's, you know, dead. Um, so I'm not sure what they intended to do with those, but that was the first email I received from them. Okay, so by this point, after I read the email, I clicked on the perfect Kickstarter link just to see, you know, what they were offering because I was kind of curious. And then obviously I was very skeptical after seeing, you know, what was listed on their site as they have a whole bunch of limited sneakers and design and clothing pieces all for very, very cheap prices. So after visiting their site, I emailed them back just because I was curious to see what they you know, wanted me to do. Because if they were going to ask me to promote fake goods as real, like that'd be um, a big deal. And so I just really was curious to see if that's what they were going for from there. So after I sent that, they responded back in a couple of hours and they said, the cooperation is that we send you free items and there is no payment and hope, and hope is a key word there, uh, you do a promotion for us. Uh, then Grace really lets the cat out of the bag and says, and all our products are not authentic. Do you still interested in it? Um, they emailed me a couple more times after that and I was like, well, you know what? I could use the fake sneakers to make a video for you guys and show you guys how far or how good replica sneakers are compared to the real thing. So after that email, I still wasn't quite fully on board, but I just sent them the link from their website to a pair of off-white UNC Jordans, which were at a very reasonable 169 bucks. Um, just to see if they'd pull through basically and I do have a pair of authentic UNC of white Jordans um, So if they did pull through I decided, you know I could do a comparison and see how good they really are to my surprise after I sent them that link They actually responded asking for some sizing details and then my shipping address and I was kind of in shock Because I, I didn't actually think it was gonna go ahead and then next thing I know This shows up my doorstep and they've never really even asked me to do anything Except for they just said that they they hoped for a promotion um, and so yeah, after a couple of strange emails, I now have a random parcel on my table. So quickly, I just wanted to be noted that I don't have anything against the people who sent me these sneakers. Um, I personally just don't mess with fakes and I definitely don't endorse the sale um, and production of fake goods. But I do understand why people do it and that is why I'm making today's video. But with that being said, let's go and see what's inside this box. So if you can't tell, this parcel has been absolutely beat. All the corners are just, you know, scuffed up and it was sent express. So it came here quite quickly. Um, and so I paid absolutely nothing for this. It just showed up at my door. And so I'm kind of, you know, a bit nervous, a bit excited to see what's inside. I'm not expecting it to come in an actual Jordan box because I did compare this box to a real 
Jordan box and they were different sizes. This is much smaller, although it is quite dense. And so this is what is inside the parcel wrapping, just like a, a cardboard box which has just been heavily taped. So heavily taped. It looks so dodgy. I, just, I don't know how this got past customs. It just looks so bad, but I guess we'll see what's inside. Susie, do you want to come look at this? Look how dodgy this looks. Are you going to open it? Yeah. But how dodgy does it look? How it's plastic package? I think they used a whole thing of sticky tape for me. <laughs> this is like a, like a brick of cocaine. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Where do you even start? I'm not expecting it to come in an actual Jordan box. It's really squeezed in here. I need to go get my actual box to compare to it because this is tiny. Finally a mild crack. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, the smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why does it smell so weird? That's some weird tape. What is that? Okay, nothing else in there. I'm gonna go get the real sneaker box. So I just moved the camera so that we could get the shot of both boxes. I did originally say that I didn't expect it to come in a box because this box, the actual Nike box, was actually bigger than the parcel it came in, but it turns out it came in, <laughs> in a box. There are noticeable differences I'm looking so far. Obviously this one is smaller and the red is off compared to the real one and it's just been, you know, chucked all around the place because the box is kind of beach. But everything else kind of seems pretty on point. Except for the stickers would be on the wrong end, and that's why the Nike ticks are going the wrong way. So I have a real pair here, obviously. Fake box, by the way. These are fake pairs. Yeah. Can you tell any difference from the, the camera? As you may have noticed, my clothes have changed and my hair is growing a little bit shorter. And this is because when I originally recorded the unboxing, um, I had thought that I would see enough differences between the real and the fake shoe that I would be able to, you know, discuss some of the obvious differences there and then. But after I unboxed them, I literally sat there for probably a good half an hour looking at the real and the fake pair, trying to distinguish some obvious differences, but really nothing stood out. All I could really find was some differences regarding the quality of the assembly of both the shoes. They're in fact so similar to me that I actually had to chuck some little black squares of tape on the bottom of the fake shoe just so I could see and know that they were definitely the fake pair and I didn't get it mixed up with my real pair. Now obviously as I showed you guys before the boxes are quite different. Uh, the real box is just a lot better quality I guess um, and it's also quite significantly different in size. Although I was quite surprised that the fakes even came in a box, let alone one which has the same uh, off-white Jordan window and all that same jazz as the authentic pair did. Since I did unbox them, I did actually also find that the fake pair came with sets of extra laces, just like the authentic pair did in uh, blue, orange, and white. Um, and I've since relaced them to look like my authentic pair, which has a white and an orange lace. So since I recorded the last part of the video, I have done some legit check research for off-white Jordans. And so today we're going to see how these shoes check out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the same shot of both sneakers. And then I want you guys to decide in your head which one is the real pair and which one is the fake pair. Um, then I'm going to run through the legit check for that part of the shoe. And then I'm going to reveal which one was actually the real pair and which one was the fake pair. So now I want you guys to remember how many you get right and then leave that number in the comments below just so I can see if I'm the only person struggling to tell them apart. So here are both shoes. Lace the same, everything the same. So we're going to start out with the classic Wings logo on the side of the Jordan 1. For a real pair, they should have a consistent font um, for the Jordan above the basketball uh, and they should also have a matte finish for the paint there as well. Often seen on fake pairs, you'll see that they are, have a shiny coating on the paint. Um, the wings, like the feathers of the wings might touch. And the perforations around the edge of that flap won't go all the way through to the other side of the leather. So when looking at both these shoes, the fake pair do have a little bit of inconsistent font. And this is really comes down to the positioning of the paint on the actual leather cutout, I guess. 
Uh, it just is a little bit off and that is the same for the wings part of the logo as well. And for the perforations, the perforations on the fake pair don't go all the way through like I said before, but on the real pair they do go all the way through quite easily. And as you can see the paint on the real pair is very clean and matte. Now moving on to the part where it says air on the midsole of each shoe. So on the real pair, once again it should have a matte finish and it should also be placed in the middle of the outsole. And Obviously the opposite is for the fake pair where it might have either a shiny finish or the placement might not be central. On the authentic pair the air is quite high. Uh, I almost think that the positioning of the fake pair um, is kind of better, it just looks a little more concentric and straight. Um, though the fake pair does give away that it is fake as it has like a glue mark or almost like a melted kind of look to the outsole where the air logo is uh, which must happen when they applied that air text and it's kind of a bit of a dead giveaway that um, that is the fake pair and that really comes down to like um, attention to detail regarding that. And then so the next thing we're going to compare is the quotation text on the inner side of the shoes. So for the real pair, it should have the B on the left foot covered by stitching um, and it should also be matte and then it should be also slightly smudged upwards, like the font should be slightly smudged um, and not just straight on, which is kind of like a minor detail that I didn't know was supposed to be there, but it's supposed to be there if the shoe is real. Then for the fake, obviously um, just shiny or not aligned. So when comparing the real and fake shoe in regards to the text on the inner side of the shoe, um, they're both very similar, like I'm very surprised with how well the fake shoe has actually done. Like they even got the smudge right, right down pat um, and all the positioning seems to be on point. Uh, the only difference that I could probably pick up is I think the fake font might be slightly different. I, I think it's the same font but I think it's either just like slightly bigger or maybe slightly thinner. Uh, there's something definitely different to it but I just really can't put my finger on it. Um, but otherwise they're both very very similar. So the next comparison is the classic uh, 85 in quotes on the inside of the uh, ankle flaps of the shoe. This is very specific to the Off-White Jordan 1 and so it is very obvious if they get it wrong. So when determining between real and fakes regarding the flap, um, on the real pair it should have a slight indent where the Wings logo is on the opposite side. And then we should also note uh, font size and consistency um, as that's something that they often struggle to get right on the fake pairs. So when comparing the real and the fake shoes that I've got here, the inside of the leather on the fake shoes is very dark and it's very hard to see any of the perforations coming through on the other side, as I mentioned before. Um, the indent though is like really over the top. I think it was something that might have been mentioned to whatever the manufacturer was saying that for a real pair they need the indent and they've gone way over the top with it and it's super dark. Um, and the fake pair just doesn't have like a neat or a clean back where the 85 logo is at all. Um, it's really kind of rough and it just doesn't look as um, detailed or cared about as it does on the real pair. The real pair is super clean, um, but as for font, they both look very similar. I can't fault them on that. So the next thing you can do to legit check your Off-White Jordans is to look at the back of the shoe. So for a real pair, it should have like an obvious kind of hourglass shape as the stitching on the midpoint should pull it in and it should be a bit wider at the top where the ankle is and a bit wider at the bottom. Another thing to look out for is the material pattern on this back leather patch here. Um, and this is where the real and the fake pair that I have here differ. Uh, when I did my research on legit checking off-white Jordan ones, I did find that for Chicago's, they should have quite an obvious rectangular grid-like pattern down there. And I was quite surprised when I looked at my legit pair of the UNC ones and saw that there was no actual pattern there. And so then I did some further research. I found out that the off-white uh, UNC Jordan ones don't actually have any particular pattern on this heel part. Um, Whereas on the fake pair that I have, they do have the very distinct pattern, like they said the Chicago's would have. And so I believe that they must have, um, you know, changed up on the UNC pair just to, you know, throw off counterfeiting and have it as an area that you can legit check from, as it seemed that people who are making the fake sneakers have caught on to the pattern when the Chicago's were released. So the next thing we can check is the swoosh on the side of each shoe. For a real pair, it should have quality stitching and the swoosh shouldn't exceed the stitching on the side and it should also be glued down as well. The back of the swoosh should be glued down but the rest of the swoosh should be free. Um, on the fake pair, the shape and the location can sometimes be off, although that's often hard to tell unless it's obvious. 
So when comparing the real and the fake pair that I have here, the biggest notice that I had in regards to the swoosh was that on the fake pair, the back part isn't stuck down. Um, it is free to move, whereas it's definitely stuck down on the real pair. And the other thing I noticed is that I think the shape of the fake pair is just kind of off regarding the swoosh. It's a bit more hooked, it's a bit thinner, um, and that's kind of a little less obvious. Um, but it, did, it is something that I picked up from looking at the real pair. And so the final thing to look at when legit checking off-white Jordans is definitely the classic off-white zip tag. For a real pair, it should just be like miles better in quality. Um, it's usually like a bigger loop or like a bigger zip tag in general. Um, and it should have a like a nice dark, richer red color, I guess. And the fake is usually like weaker in color and just like cheap looking. And this is exactly what I've seen when comparing the real and fake shoes that I have here today. The fake zip tie is just really, like it looks like it's made out of just poor quality plastic. Um, it has a matte finish, the color is really off and it just looks cheap in regards to not only the make of the tag, but also the print on it. Um, and that is a very obvious giveaway when comparing it to the real pair. Now, the only other obvious difference that I pick up right off the bat, apart from this weird quality assurance OG tag on the left shoe, was just the overall finish and attention to details on the fakes were just really poorly done. And I do think this comes down to just the materials and the manufacturing of these shoes as they are obviously done for a lot cheaper than Nike does them for. But still, if I saw someone had these on feet, I don't think I'd be confident enough to call them out as fake, as they are just that close to the real pair. Um, I'd really need to pick them up and analyze them if I was going to make a definitive decision. So whether you think these shoes are obviously fake or not, I do understand the reason behind replica sneakers to an extent, and that is what I want to have a little discussion about at the end of today's video. Um, just whilst I've got these sneakers here with me. So with the rise of popularity of sneaker culture, fakes, often also known as reps, have become a lot more popular as some sneakerheads don't want to have to pay the huge resale price for limited sneakers, and they don't want to pay the huge designer markup for some designer shoes, even if they genuinely want to wear the shoe themselves. I'd say it's probably more to do with hyped and limited releases, as the resale market has just become so huge that people are going to great lengths by using bots and auto checkout scripts to buy shoes they don't even want to wear just so that they can resell them for more and earn some quick cash. And so keeping that in mind, sneak replicas have kind of just given people like, I guess a plan B if they take an L on release day. And also with help from communities such as our rep sneakers on Reddit, which have over 100,000 followers, the quality of these reps seem to just be getting better and better due to consumer feedback. Now, when you hop on one of these communities, you'll see all kinds of people trying to justify why it's okay to buy and sell replica sneakers. And that is where the line gets a little bit blurry for me. Now, I understand the points, like it's all very convincing when you're hearing it from their perspective. And in an ideal world, it would be great if we could all cop the sneakers that we want to wear for the retail price. But there's also a reason why producing replica sneakers is illegal. And there's also a reason why companies either mark up designer sneakers or produce a limited amount of sneakers. Sneaker companies only produce certain stock levels of specific shoes based on careful calculations that they've done in regards to the marketing strategy for that specific sneaker. Scarcity is also a big driver behind the sneaker market. And I can say with confidence that if there was no such thing as scarcity in the sneaker market, it'd be a very different sneaker community today. Now, as for the complaints regarding the huge cost of some sneakers, this is all driven by the resale market and not necessarily the sneaker companies themselves. Now, I know everyone kind of either has a love or a hate relationship with the resale market, and there's definitely some resellers out there which can be frustrating, but the growth in the resale market has also led to the creation of businesses such as StockX and Goat, which are a huge benefit to the community, as you can be sure when ordering from these sites that you're going to be getting an authentic product, instead of having to trust some random eBay seller that they're sending you a legit product like you had to do a couple of years ago. Now to wrap up my entire opinion on all of this, I think that the production and sale of fakes damages the reputation um, of the designers and the brands that work really hard to create the sneakers in the first place. I also think it damages the market for legit sneakers and also harms the entire sneaker community uh, by creating distrust amongst consumers. Now the biggest thing that I don't get about people who buy replica sneakers is that they obviously buy the replicas because they want to own the real thing. But for me personally, I don't think, you know, lying to people about them being real, but also knowing to yourself that these aren't real sneakers, feels that desire to own the real thing. 
Or is that just me who thinks that? I just feel like it wouldn't feel that desire to own the real shoe. Now, if this is your first time hearing about replica sneakers and you want to, you know, look a little bit more into it. Uh, I know Vice made a really cool like mini documentary on the replica sneaker market in China. And I'll link it below because I did watch it before I started to play in this video. Um, and it's very informative and it's a very good video. And I so I really recommend you guys go into checking it out if you want to learn a little bit more about the replica sneaker market. So now the real question is, what am I going to do with these fake sneakers that I got sent? I'm obviously not going to wear them considering I own a genuine pair of the same shoe and I don't really want to give them to anyone just because they're fakes and I don't want to promote the wear or sale of fake sneakers. Now, you guys might have seen on Instagram or YouTube, there are some people who just do crazy stuff with um, really expensive shoes. You know, they're just like destroying them and treating them poorly. And the answer to all those clips is that they use reps. And so people think that they're real, but they're really not real. Um, and the best example I can think of this that I can remember is a guy who had a pair of off-white blazers and what he does is he cuts the heel off the shoe with a hacksaw so he could heel flip on his skateboard. And it sounds stupid but if I can find the clip I'll throw it in. Well what I was thinking was that if this video reaches 500 likes, which is quite a stretch for my channel at the moment, I will do whatever the most upvoted comment below says for these shoes just to give them a fitting farewell. And then who knows, we might actually trick some people into thinking that I'm doing it with a real pair of the same shoe. So make sure you comment your ideas below and I'll go check them out and I'll like the ones that I like the most. Um, and also if you're watching this video now, go down below, have a read and see which ones you like the most as I'm kind of keen to see what you guys come up with. Now, if you're new to the channel and you've made it this far in the video, you might as well go down below and smash that subscribe button just so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And also, if you liked today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up just so that I know I'm doing the right things. Also, if you wanna keep up with what I'm doing in between these videos, or you know, you wanna hit me up in the DMs, feel free to check out my Twitter and my Instagram. They'll be both linked below. Otherwise, you can just check out the handle at Joshua Denneher, which will be up here somewhere. Other than that, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time here with me today on the channel. I appreciate your support so much and I'm sorry it's been a little bit of time in between today's video and my last video. Um, just some stuff at uni come up and it kind of took priority so I'm really happy to be able to shoot this video today. Um, anyways guys, thank you for your continued support. This has been your boy Joshua and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. They literally smell like shit.